Welcome back to Go Local Live here in the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. I'm here now with our Secretary of State, Nellie Gorbea. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, thank you for having me. So it's, uh, it's a big, big time of year for the state of Rhode Island. We just had our, uh, our candidates submit all of their signatures and uh, they're, they're now qualified. So where, where are we now? So right now my office is hard at work and they will be over the weekend to design all of the ballots. Make sure that all the names are on it. Make sure that everybody's names are spelled correctly. <laughs> all the places are put in, in place. Uh, and then sometime uh, early next week, uh, you'll actually be able to go on to vote.ri.gov, which is the Voter Information Center, and see a sample ballot, which is pretty exciting. Well, wow, that's, a, that's a pretty quick turnaround. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we work hard to uh, make sure that we get it out as soon as possible. For one thing, we have to get out military ballots, which uh, we have a very tight timeline for that. We have to make sure that they receive theirs uh, at least 45 days before the primary. And uh, our, prim our primary is coming up. It's, it's one of the latest in, in the country. It is. It is September 12th, which this year happens to be a Wednesday. I know people are used to going and voting on a Tuesday. Uh, but this year, because of the religious holidays uh, that happen in the Jewish calendar, we were able to move it to Wednesday, September 12th. And uh, so that means that all of our deadlines have moved accordingly. And so people have uh, until August 13th to register to vote. So there's so still time. About there is time, but weeks. you know what? As you're looking at this, absolutely go to vote.ri.gov. Verify your voter information. Make now sure that time. you're, yes, absolutely. You're registered where you're supposed to be, uh, that there aren't any issues, so that come the time when you want to vote, it's all set done. And uh, we just found out today that you've joined uh, the National Association of Secretaries of State, uh, their council, to help reduce voter mm -hmm. fraud, is it? So it's a, the Government Infrastructure Council, Coordinating Council, and it's actually, I'm a representative from the National Association of Secretaries of State to this um, multi-level uh, uh, coordinating council that looks at elections infrastructure, particularly from the cybersecurity perspective. It was something that was created to help advise the Department of Homeland Security. We have nonprofits like the Election Center, Secretaries of State like myself, because I'm co-chair of the Elections Committee for the National Association of Secretaries of State. And the idea is to bring in a perspective from a variety of, of, of points of view about what we need to do to protect our elections infrastructure from cyber attacks. And what, what kind of steps are we going to be taking in this upcoming year? I know uh, election security has been a, a big yes. buzzword with the whole, w yeah. was there Russian influence? Was there not Russian influence? What, how has how the approach to election security changed? So, so absolutely, I mean, when I first was elected, um, I actually took it upon myself to improve our elections uh, security infrastructure at the Department of State. Uh, so by the time 2016 came around, we were in a good spot to really ramp up. Uh, we've got a great team in place, great state employees who can actually speak to the Department of Homeland Security on technical terms and make sure that we're doing everything possible to mitigate the risk against anybody trying to penetrate or hack our election systems. Uh, I'm, I'm very proud of the work that we've done in that area. Um, this, this election cycle, we are all hyper vigilant for anything that might happen. And I will say this, I've been a part of security clear, uh, um, high level security briefings with regards to what happened in the 2016 election and uniformly all of our intelligence community says that Russia was absolutely trying to meddle in our elections. They did not succeed in changing any votes, thankfully, uh, but they are definitely at it and they will do it again. And this is not just the 2016 election, it's a long standing uh, set of activities that Russia and previously the Soviet Union has had with regards to trying to destabilize uh, democracy in the United States. So it's nothing new, but we're prepared, we're ready, we're absolutely taking all the measures possible to make sure that we mitigate uh, any risks that we have for any, either Russia or any other foreign actor or domestic actor to get involved in our elections. And so on a, on a smaller scale, mm -hmm. there's also, especially in the last election, there's been a lot of talk of concerns over dead people voting and <laughs> whether or not um, undocumented immigrants have mm -hmm. been voting. How much of an issue is that in the state? It seems like there's very inflated numbers a lot of times. Hugely inflated numbers. Um, really, um, we have taken active steps all along the last three and a half years to make sure that our voter lists are as accurate as possible. In fact, we have a feedback loop from the department 
of health, their vital statistics. When people die in the state, they let us know. And so we're able to remove them automatically from the voter rolls. We're able to get also dead voters uh, removed having that, that have moved to other states that are part of a group that Rhode Island joined my first year called the Electronic uh, Registration Information Center, ERIC for short. This is a multi-state nonprofit where we have agreed to in a very secure environment with um, uh, technology that was produced by IBM uh, to really uh, be able to safely exchange voter lists. Uh, they go after the Social Security Master Death Files. And we're able to get flagged for us people on our voter lists who either maybe have moved to another state, moved within the state, or have died. And so we're able to handle that in a legal kind of way under the Voting Rights Act, under everything that uh, is required by federal law. And so I believe that over the next you know, several years, we will have one of the most accurate voter lists possible. Um, Florida and Massachusetts have just recently joined ERIC. And that, I believe, is going to make a huge difference in the kind of information that we get. And we're able to reach out to voters to get them removed from our voter lists once they've moved away from our, our state. So is the goal here at some point to make it a national list, get every, every state to join in, and then you can really? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think own. that would be Eric's goal, would be to go completely national. Um, we're about halfway there. I believe we're just under 25 states that have joined. Uh, and, and I'm looking forward to doing that, because accurate voter lists are absolutely uh, critical to us being able to run really good elections, being able to run cost-effective uh, elections as well, because we mail out to everybody on our voter lists. So I don't want anybody extra on these voter lists, for sure. True, the postage adds up very quickly. Yes, it does, <laughs> it does. And uh, when it comes to voter IDs as well, there's mm -hmm. also been kind of a hot button issue of does it disenfranch but disenfranchise voters? Is it a good idea? Where, where do you stand on that? So, yeah, um, so really, voter ID, which is really a photo ID, is the law of Rhode Island. And while um, I have said initially that I didn't really think that the costs outweighed the benefits, I, I do respect the law in Rhode Island. And so we have made everything possible to minimize the impact on people's lives. So our office provides free photo IDs for voting uh, to anybody who requests it. We go out and do voter outreach events where these um, IDs can be uh, asked for. And uh, you know, so I think that we've come a long ways. I think the most important message for everybody out there is to know that if for some reason, come election day, like you're, you're like me and you've changed purses and you forgot to put your wallet and suddenly you're there, um, or you find that you show up and your driver's license has expired and therefore it's not a valid photo ID, you are eligible to vote under a provisional ballot. So nobody should be turned away on election day. You can ask for a provisional ballot, fill out all the information. It will be reviewed by an election official who will then make sure that this is a, uh, an actual voter who is entitled to vote. Mm -hmm. And then your, your ballot will get processed. But I think sometimes people think like, oh gosh, like I don't have it. I have to go back. I'm not going to come back. No, you can ask for a provisional ballot on the spot and, and file your vote that way. There's still a way. Yes, absolutely. And uh, so as, as we're getting all the, the signatures in from the various candidates. Were there, were there any surprises that you guys saw? So not, not in my office per se. I know that there were a few things that the Board of Elections have hand, has handled, the Board of Elections being an independent body that's nonpartisan and uh, really rules over any kind of disputes around signatures and things like that, along with the local boards of canvassers in every community. Um, but no, I, I think that for the most part, I mean, we're ready to get those ballots ready in people's hands. What I do want to make sure people know is there are actually three ways to vote in Rhode Island. So if for some reason you think you may not be able to get to the polling location on September 12th, you can request a mail ballot if you do so before August 22nd. Uh, and so the ballot will be mailed to your house. You can fill it out in the comfort of your home. You can research all you want before you fill that ballot out. It has pre-postage paid envelope with it, so you don't even have to worry about finding the stamps and send it into the mail and get it to us. Or you can hand deliver it. You have to have it to the State Board of Elections on Branch Avenue here in Providence by 8 p.m. on Election Day. So, but you ha do have that option of getting your ballot mailed to your house so that you can vote. Um, and then if you miss the deadline of August 22nd to ask for the mail ballot, you have 20 days there where you can go into your local city hall or town hall and ask for an emergency ballot. And what they'll do there is they'll put you through a number of, of paperwork, 
but they'll, uh, you know, eventually you'll get the ballot, you'll be able to put it in, get your, your signature notarized right there at the clerk. And, and, and it's a form of early voting that I think a lot of people don't realize that they have access to because it sounds so ominous. Oh, I don't have an emergency. I just don't know if I can go on election day. Well, no, that's OK. That's what you it's just, for. That's what it's for. So it used to be in the olden days, you had to swear that you had an emergency. That's no longer the case. But the title has kept. So you have three ways to vote, mail ballot, emergency ballots, or on election day, which actually I find kind of fun because you get to see everybody there on oh, the yeah, polling location. Yeah, you get your stickers. Yeah, yeah. You feel like you're really part of the process. Exactly. And uh, so with with a primary day coming up, uh, what would you say to voters who might say, "Oh, well, you know, it's just the primary. It's not, it's not as important, or it's not a presidential election. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's worth voting." What, what would you say to them? I would say absolutely be a voter. Voting is absolutely essential to the working of our democracy. And in these days, I have to tell you, some really important decisions are made at your school committee level, at your city or town council level, general assembly or general officers. Every single level of government has a huge impact on your life. And the only way we know how you feel about things is if you go out and vote. So while I get that some people might get discouraged because it takes time, because you don't know exactly what to do, you know, elections are not pop quizzes. You can check out your sample ballots come next week and look at what you're being asked to do. Uh, but I absolutely, as your Secretary of State, as part of someone who's a part of a military family, I will say it is so important to vote. So, and you can get more information on all of this at vote.ri.gov, which is your voter information center. So please go there, vote.ri.gov. That's where, that's where you can find everything. Everything. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Now we all know everything we need to know to be the most <laughs> important voters, with uh, the most informed voters, yeah. that is, with, uh, with primary day coming up soon. So thank you so much for joining us today. Secretary of State Nelly Gorbea, we really appreciate you taking time to come in. I know it's very busy in your office these yep. days, a lot, of, uh, a lot of votes to count. And yep. No, all sorts of things. To go through <laughs> and so much going on. Yep. No, thanks. Well, thanks so much for joining us. And we'll be right back with our last guest here on Go Local Live.